Yep. All right, Shalom. We are the Hebrew Israelites from the Indianapolis camp of the Great Millstone. And we're to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, Bashem, Kakwadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of the Great Millstone who rule well and teaching us this 100% truth. Salutations to them and our fellow Akim who labor in this truth week in and week out on the highways and byways. Also, salutations to the hopeful elect of the scattered 12 tribes of Israel, scattered to the four corners of the earth that be like to the speckled bird, also known as your Israelite foreigners and your so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And they are as follows the tribe of Judah, the so called Negroes, the tribe of Benjamin, the so called West Indians, the tribe of Levi, the so called Haitians, the tribe of Simeon, the so called Dominicans, the tribe of Zebulon, the so called Guatemalans, the Panamanians, the tribe of Ephraim, the so called Puerto Ricans, the tribe of Manessa, the so called Cubans, the tribe of Gad, the so called North American Indians, the tribe of Reuben, the so called Seminole Indians. The tribe of Nathali, the so-called Argentinians to Chileans, the tribe of Asher, the so-called Clemens to Uruguayans, and the tribe of Issachar, the so-called Mexicans. You, we say Shalom. Shalom. All right, we'll just get right into it. Right. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 34, and verse 1. It says, Come near ye nations to hear, and hearken ye people, let the earth hear, and all that is in the world and all things that come forth of it. Uh, and this is uh, the prophets, you know, calling for the prophets to speak to all the nations and let them know uh, the, the, the coming uh, uh, prophecies of, of this world, okay? Namely, the salvation of uh, the nation of uh, Israel, the elect of Israel. Okay. Just, uh, just, uh, this is Jeremiah 31 and 1. Jeremiah 31 and 1. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. Yeah, because you said, before I, I, I formed thee in the womb, I knew thee. He knew what his prophets was before they came into existence, okay? And he said he sanctified you. What is that? The sanctification means to make you holy, to make you separate, okay? And made you a prophet unto the world. You know, you got to uh, say these things. A prophet, uh, prophecy, it means, it means to say the four, okay? Say the things that are going to happen before they happen. All right. Dictionary. Dictionary. Okay. Yep. Ordain. It says to establish or order by appointment, decree, or law. Ah, and that's the thing. He, he established established uh, us as prophets. Okay. Precept. Out here to deliver his word. Uh, verse six. Then said I, I, Lord Yahweh, my shy power. Behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord Yahweh Bashim Shai said unto me, Say not I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Ah, he said he, he, he was a child, so he was a little hesitant about doing the work of the Lord. But the Lord said, you know, say, say that, that you're not a child. You're going to do as I command you to do. That's a commandment. And you, and you're a prophet and he sanctifies you as a prophet. You are commanded to do that work, okay? Be not afraid of their faces. For I am with thee to deliver thee, said Yahweh Shemel Shah. And he says, be not afraid of their faces. And that's the, that, you know, that's going to be the wicked folks who are looking at you, don't understand uh, what's going on, coming against you, scoffing, okay? No, no matter what uh, happens, you know, uh, our job is to, is, is to do this prophecy. Get out here and spread this word, you know, of, of his coming. All right? Uh, verse 9. Then the Lord Yahweh Shemel Shah put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord Yahweh Bashim Shai said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. God, he said he's put his words in, in Jeremiah's mouth. That's the same thing he did to Moses in Exodus uh, 4, I think it's 10 through 12. Right. Same thing he did, all right? Okay, we, we, we are doing his work. Yeah, as the scriptures say, you know, he does nothing. He revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Right. Okay? So he speaks through us. We are doing his, his word. You know, as the scriptures say, he has spoken by the mouth of the prophets since the beginning. You know, according to uh, Luke 1, 68 through 70. All right? Last verse. Verse 10. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Kind. So, yeah, he, he said he has sent them to put over the nations, okay? to root out, okay? He's going to tell those heathen nations their transgressions of what they did to us, while at the same time speaking to the elect of Israel, telling them what they need to do to be right. built up, okay? 
and, and come out of this wickedness, all right? Uh, this is Jeremiah 28 and 7. It says, Nevertheless, hear thou now this word that I speak in thine ears and in the ears of all people. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesy both against many countries and great against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. God, you said the prophets that have been before, you know, the prophets that again, as the scriptures say, the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets, right? Okay, so what, 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 has, been, what has been happening uh, in every generation, the prophets have gotten out and prophesied against those kingdoms in, in, you know, in every captivity that we've been in before that kingdom was yanked down, okay? Every prophet has spoken, all right? All right. This is uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 49, and verse 1. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, ye people from far. The Lord hath called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother, hath he made mention of my name. God, that's, you know, going back to the same thing that Jeremiah 1 and 5. You know, he, he called them from the Bible to, to speak to those, to, to those nations, you know, to prophesy against those nations for the, for the evils that they've done to us. You know, and once again, to prophesy to the elect of Israel. That's what this is all about right now, you know, prophesying to the elect of uh, uh, Israel, and that's been happening through every generation, and, you know, hopefully this is the last one. You know, we believe that this is the last one, the, the final captivity, okay? Right. Because this is a revival of the Roman Empire. All right. This just a quick uh, comment. So right now, as we would be, what we've been reading as far as the you know being ordained and sanctified to be a prophet to the nation, that means the highest office on earth right now is the ministry of the prophets. Uh, Starting right. our apostles and elder bishops, and the rest of like men, like like minded like men on down. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Well, who's preaching what? The hundred percent doctrine uh, through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemuel Shah. You know, so just to make a mention today, you the highest office on earth is the people that you looked at with bath rolls and towels and y'all want to mock and scoff and he looked like this, he looked like that. Well, those are the men who are the future, you know, leaders, you know, yep. of the upper echelon of the government yep. underneath Yahweh by, by Shemiah Shah, you That's know, right. in the kingdom to come. That's right. That's right. Those future judges, man. Yep. They're going to be judges. Yeah. You know, so hey, they'll go where they must. Exactly. You know? right. Back in the book of Isaiah 34 and 2, it says, for the for the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. Uh, and that indignation is his righteous anger, all right? Upon all nations, you know, all nations. That, that includes the nation of Israel, but that's the two-thirds of Israel. Okay, that righteous anger, all right? And his fury upon all their armies. He have utterly destroyed them. He have delivered them to the slaughter. Uh, so that's that's talking about the, the, the impending um, um, uh, destruction that's coming. Okay, he has delivered them to the slaughter. You know, uh, you're going to be slaughter means to kill. You know, he's coming back to, to wipe you out, take you off this earth. All right, that's part of that judgment. You know, and like the scriptures say, the judgment is under the sun. All right, Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 8. Therefore, wait ye upon me, said Yahweh by Shemel Shah, until the day that I rise up to the prey. God, he said, wait ye uh, uh, upon me. And here again, we're not to avenge ourselves. You know, wait upon the Lord. Okay? He will fight for us. Right. You know? It says, for my determination is to gather the nations. Get that word, determination. I don't know. So, so say, for my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdom, to pour upon them my indignation. Even all my fierce anger. God, he said he's going to pour upon his indignation against all those kings. All those kings that, that put their hands on the nation of Israel. Um, and he, uh, I was going to say, someone want to grab us a second Maccabees uh, 5, 519. Yeah. Termination, sir. Yeah. Uh, determination. It's a uh, judicial uh, decision settling or ending a controversy. God, God. Pretty, pretty much that's uh, the yep, uh, uh, decision, decisiveness, firmness, resolution, uh, purposefulness, uh, resolve. That, 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 that decision, that, that, that determination, resolve, that means that there's a goal, okay, that has to be accomplished. All right? And, and in regards to that, that determination in that scripture. Uh, it says Mashapat, 
I mean, what? Judgment. Uh -huh. Right? Right? Judgment. Justice. The ordinance. You know, just throw that in there, brother. Uh -huh. So, yeah, that's a. Uh, so, we can finish it off. So, this ultimately me what? It's a part of the Lord's judgment. Yep. You know, right? They say it's either you're going to be on the right hand side of it to receive salvation, or on the left hand side to receive condemnation and ultimately destruction. Right? Because they say. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. All the earth, yeah. and that fire is, is the nuclear missiles, you know, those concentrated laser beams, all right? He's going to devour it, you know, with all of his jealousy because of what you did to us. All right? Yeah, I got the second Maccabees. This is the book of 2 Maccabees, chapter 5, and verse 19. Nevertheless, Yahweh did not choose the people for the place's sake, but the place of for the people's sake. Ah, so it's, uh, Israel is a people before it's a place. All right? And then there's the, the other one that, you know, this, um, I think it's uh, First Maccabees 7 and 10. Yeah, well, uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, did you get it real quick? Yep. It says, uh, First Maccabees 7 and 10. Chapter 2, uh, point to 10, I'm going to start at 9. Her glorious vessels are <clears throat> carried away into captivity. Con. Her infants are slain in the streets. Her young men with the sword of the enemy. What nation hath not had a part in her kingdom and gotten of her spoil? Uh, so it says, what nation have not had a part in her kingdom? That means all you nations that had a hand in our demise, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, whether you did it directly or profited from it, okay? Mm -hmm. You've had a hand in the, in, in, the, in the current condition that the nation of Israel is in, all right? Right. None of y'all ever tried to stop or ease yep. or do anything to come on, to do anything on our behalf to ease the our calamities and the things that we've been going through. But the Lord said he is sore displeased with the heathen, for they have poured the, the uh, affliction. Right. Uh, no? uh, so, uh, so like I said, in regards to that, yeah, the Lord is displeased with you. Yep. And so you ain't going to help us. Other scriptures say that they, they was, y'all was happy that he has done it. Y'all yep. uh -huh. couldn't wait for us to be took it down so y'all could get our spoil of our vessels, ultimately to be over top of us and ultimately reap the benefits of the earth off the backs of the Israelites. Uh, what did he say in uh, Baruch 4? He said, miserable are they that not only took us, but those who received us, right. okay? Yep. They're going to be miserable. Yep. So guess what? All you nations, they think you took a hand in their life. You're guilty by association, man. Yep. Yep. So you're going to be judged accordingly. Yeah. Just to back up, you know, what your brothers are saying, this is Obadiah 1 and 15. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. The day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. And notice it says the day of the Lord, it is his day. And as the scriptures say, whatever his uh, His pleasure is, it's going to be whatever he wants it to be. All right? That's right. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thy own head. Con, and what that does, you know, that, that goes into, uh, into Deuteronomy 30 and 7. The curses that were upon the nation of Israel are now going to turn upon our enemies. Uh, also, what's that, uh, Colossians 3 and 25, mm -hmm. you know, he that doeth wrong must receive the wrong mm -hmm. which he has done. There's no respect of person, okay? So you gotta, you, you just can't, especially you, uh, you, saw, you, know, you know, you don't think anything is going to happen, okay, because of what you did. But, you know, like the Lord said, you know, he reserved you for the day of destruction. That's right. You know, as the scriptures say, you know, you, that's the reason why you are not in trouble as other men, because he got you reserved for something special, the day of destruction which is the Lord's day, the day of the Lord that the brother brought out, all right? Back in Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 3, it says, Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. Now, and those mountains go to the government. But he says their slain should be cast out and their things shall come up out of the carcasses. The thing, that means no burials. Precept. Nobody being shipped home. You know, you're going to uh, uh, be destroyed right where you stand. Precept. Okay? There is no cleanup. No shipping nobody's home. All right? No formal uh, 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 funerals like you see today. You know, you, you're done, destroyed right where you stand. All right? Okay. Jeremiah chapter 25 and verse 13. Verse 31, it says, okay. it says, a noise shall come even to the ends of the earth. That's that nuclear destruction. You say, you know, also you tie in the concentrated laser beams. Concentrated laser beams, yep. 
that's it. It's a, uh, for the Lord, you have a, have a controversy with the nation. You want to get that word controversy? Uh, it's a, he will plead with all flesh, right? The judge. Uh, he will give them that are wicked to the sword, say, if you have a shot. Uh, and, that, and that sword is, is, is that destruction. And it says he has a, a, a controversy with all nations. Okay? You got that? Controversy is a decision marked especially by the expression of opinion, views, or disputes, a uh, quarrel, strife, altercation, um, a battle. Battle. That, that's what he's gearing up for, a battle with the nations, all right? Mm -hmm. Yep. You're pretty much going to that dispute. Yep. The Lord has a bone to pick with you, nation. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, what y'all did to the controversy of Israel, and also got a bone to pick with you two-thirds. Yep. If y'all come in a like stance of another the nation, pretty much try to throw off or throw down this truth. Mm -hmm. To put it off. Mock it, scoff it, destroy it. So all y'all have to pay yep. for the things y'all have done. You know, because the scriptures say that all must appear before the judge. See, the child shall have my shot. And whether they have, for what they have done, whether good or evil, you know, rough repair for it. So you're going to all have to pay for the judge. What? Because two, like I say, two thirds is helping for it in it too. They, yep. they love living in the wickedness. Uh, they want to keep our people down just as much as us. So called he's not even the so called white man and the rest of the nation. Okay. Right. They're joined hand in hand with them. Uh, verse, verse 32. Thus saith Yahweh Bashim Shai of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. Right? So, like I said, evil, evil shall go forth from nation to nation. So, Evil meaning what? Evil meaning time, evil meaning bad. Right. So bad times is going to come from, from nation to nation to nation to nation. Right? Uh, real quick, brother, can get Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 5. Right? Can I there? Go ahead, brother. This is the book of Ezekiel chapter 7 and verse 5. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, and evil, only evil, behold, is come. Right. So all the people who's Hoping for a change, hoping to pray, you know, <laughs> doing whatever it is you can to bring peace and happiness and harmony to the world. Well, it's not gonna happen. God. It's not a part of the plans that you have about Shemel Shah. His plan is to continue to, you know, bring evil and evil and evil for what? For the wickedness that have exceedingly polluted the whole earth. God. And their hurtful works are fulfilled. So the wages that you are gonna receive from your wickedness and all the things that you do is gonna be evil, bad times, death and destruction. God. That's what's gonna come up the times that we are coming into. Right. Right. I, I will say if I may add to your point, that's also a message for you Christians out there. When that day of the Lord comes, it's not going to be one glad day. It's not going to be a joyful day when he returns. He's telling you it's going to be evil the whole time. Right. All right. It says, uh, an end is come. The end is come. And watch it for thee. Behold, it is come. Right. So it's evident. It is manifest that we are in the last of time. Uh, all these prophecies, these end time prophecies come to pass, whether it be nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, earthquakes, pestilences, uproars of the people, you know, um, earth, oh yeah, like the earthquake of diverse places, these, uh, what they call these so-called natural disasters, all these things come on the ground, you know, uh, just everything what the scriptures is talking about, right? Measure down the time diligently, we seeing all these things come to pass, and we tie them up to the scripture, and showing that we, it is evident that we are in those end times, we are in those latter times. Yeah. We are in the time of the visitation of Yahweh Bashim Right. Uh -huh. The salvation is right at the door. The death and destruction is right at the door. We just constantly, you know, patiently waiting for that day to come to pass. Right. If, if you can, uh, if you may, Bashim jump to the verse 25. Verse 25. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 7 and verse 25. Destruction coming, and they shall seek peace. And there shall be none. So your people, y'all seeking for peace and peace and peace. And like I said, you just want peace. You just want comfort. You know, but guess what? It says destruction coming. And what you're longing for as far as that peace is not going to come to pass. Nope. Only death and destruction is coming to this place. The evil has been in, has been sown here. And therefore, the, those works, the hurtful works have been fulfilled. So for the evil and wickedness that have been sown here, the, the judgment got to come. Which yep. is death and destruction with the, the thermonuclear warheads. The contrary limbs of beings to cleanse this place with fire. Uh, right. That's the only way that this place can receive peace is that this place has to be thrown down first. Then those who are going to be restored and put in the power seat, power seat are going to be the Israelites start with, you know, from Yahweh, Yahweh Shai on down. That's when peace is going to come into the world. But until these, but until that time, with these devils in power, 
all the mournings, all these sad plagues, all the pains, the travail, the beginning of sorrows is going to continue to uh, come past this place and overtake it and pursue this place God with mercy. evil. That's the only thing that's going to come. Good. Good. First Thessalonians 5 and 3, it says, When they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them as a tra as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Right. So that's what they're going on. Your people... You're longing for your government. You're sitting glued at the TV. What are they going to say? What are they going to do so they can make you feel good? All right. right. But then when they talk about peace and safety, what happens? Sudden destruction. When they put their peace plans and we're going to put money to this and put money to that to stop this. But guess what? Even more dire and perilous times come after that. Good. All right. Right? They say, it's like they, so what, what the AFR say, bro? They shall not escape. They shall not escape. So you going to be you going to be in the midst of this. And you're going to be amidst the turmoil, the plagues. The, the, the defamation, the destruction of the entire world. You're not going right. to be an escapist. Right, right. So if you're allotted for death and destruction, or die by famine or pestilence, whatever the case may be, you're going to die by that. Uh -huh. But we know that the hopeful elect, you know, the elect of the nation of Israel, they're going to receive salvation through it. And if some who may not have to die for the testimony you have about Shemel Shai, that's a great honor, and they're going to be risen up first uh -huh. when the visitation uh -huh. comes, uh -huh. when the salvation comes. So it's an honor to die for you. How about you, Shot? It's right. you know, an honor to die from being a warlock selling drugs. Right. You know, being a, uh, you know, Ishii, whatever, whatever they want to call themselves. Right. Die for that cause. That ain't no honor in that. Nope. Well, the honor is to die for you. How about you, Shot? Because he's right. doing all these things for us. Also for his son, only begotten son as well, too, for what they did to him. All these things are happening, all the death destruction is coming for what? Like we read, for the controversy of Zion. Right. There's a bone to pick with you, nation. Right. Matter of fact, yeah. You know, I'm just... Okay, and now, my last little one. Yeah, yeah, hold you up. It's a, uh, Jeremiah 25, verse 33. Going back to, uh, what that, I said, the carcasses. Yep. Cast out. Yep. Jeremiah 25, verse 33. And the slain of the Lord, you have by Shemel Shah, yep. shall be at that day. Right. Well, this is one day, you know, ain't no pre-tribulation in seven years. In <laughs> that day, from one end of the earth, even to the other end of the earth. Mm. They shall not be lamented. Ain't nobody going to be crying for you, feeling bad for you. Neither gathered nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. Mm. So we know that that great day of destruction is coming, man. It's gonna, like I said, it's going to be slain from one end of the earth, from the east end of the earth, from like China, the far mm. east, all the way over to the hindermost, the utmost part of the earth, which is over here in the west. God. The slain of the Lord, like I said, shall be many. I got that. This is uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 66, and verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with chip to like you. The Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. Right, so the Lord said he's going to come with fire and with his chariots. We don't understand what that fire is from the thermal nuclear warheads mm -hmm. and also, like I said, the concentrated laser beams from the chariot. Mm -hmm. That's the fire that he commanded. He said, with, with the, what, the chariot, which what y'all call UFOs or UAPs, uh -huh. right? Y'all don't, y'all, oh, we don't know what they are. They're, they're unidentified. But the men of the Lord, like the brother said earlier, showing the Lord power is nothing, but he revealed up his secrets to the service of prophets. We can tell you those are the children, those are the chariots of Israel. Right, right, right. Go ahead, bro. It says, to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. So they don't, they don't sound like how y'all say that our Lord Jesus Christ, they're going to come down and his arms out, no sun shining, sun rays <laughs> behind him, birds and shit flying over here. Candy and stuff, lollipops, green pops. Right. None of that's gonna happen. Right, right. Naked, right. Baby, right. naked uh, babies and stuff. <laughs> come as you are. Come, everybody. You yeah. just say Jesus Christ, I'm gonna bring you up. That's not. That's not written in the scriptures. Nope. Right. That, that day that's gonna come is gonna be a day of darkness, of gloominess, of clouds, right. of desolation, of distress. Right. right. Brother Scott, you read that. It's no no light in it. Yeah. yeah. No, no light. light in it. I was just thinking uh, that Amos 5, 18 and 19. Yeah. Too, yeah. Verse 16 uh -huh. says, "For by fire." And by his sword. Which we spoke about by his fire and then by a sword. Which would be what? A sword is what? A killing instrument. Mm -hmm. So just right. just simple tying it all together, man. Death and destruction is coming from your how about Shemel Shah. Right. Go ahead, bro. Will the Lord plead with all flesh? And he's not going to plead with you, beg with you. Please stop doing this, nothing that. That word plead, go back to Mashapah, which means to judge you. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Right, bro. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. That don't sound like somebody that was begging you to stop doing what you're doing. Please stop doing it. No, I'm about to come plead. I'm about to come judge you. I'm about to deliver you to the slaughter. I'm going to kill you, destroy you. Right? Because the indignation of Yahweh, y'all have angered him. 
And I said he's gonna burn you with the righteous with that jealousy of his of the fire. Mm -hmm. Righteous anger. That's what's right. to the people. So right. y'all thinking this gonna come a certain way, but no, like I said, it said that day is not light. Nope. That day is full of darkness. Yeah. Hey, real quick, and why do we call it righteous anger? Because the most high doesn't he doesn't uh he does everything justly. Yep. All right. So you you've earned that. All right, he's not just doing it for no reason. Exactly. Uh, uh, you said you know, I, I got one. You got a yeah. 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 Just uh, in the back of up, you, you know, you've already mentioned it. It's slain. It says to kill violently. Uh, wantonly. Where's the love in that? Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm not going to go just go go out back and shoot old Yeller. No. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. 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 Like the brother said, it's going to be death by pain. Right. People melting every day where, yep. starving to death, yep. eating each other, pestilence is eating them up. You're going to die by a painful death, a gruesome right. death. God. Or in great numbers. Oh, right. So, like I said, a great number. Like I said, the scripture say it, the beginning of great death mm -hmm. is coming. So it's going to, like I said. I got that too. Let me just get right into it. <laughs> and this is uh, 2nd Ezra 16, starting at verse 18. It says, the beginning of sorrows and great mornings, the beginning of famine and great death, mm. the beginning of wars, and the power shall stand in fear, the beginnings of evils. What should I do when these evils shall come? Right. And then you people go say, oh, well, that don't sound like my Jesus or my God because you serve an idol. Yep. Right. It don't exist. That's why I don't. We serve the living power. Who we, he said he formed the light and create darkness. Uh, he make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all, all these, these things. things. Right. So like you said, right. the beginning of beginning of sorrows, of, of great death, of war, of famines, you know, saying all these things are part of the plan of your how about Shemel Shah. And they didn't say maybe I may do this or not. No, this is the beginning of that. Because the previous verse say, what? Well, woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? Right. From a man of the Lord seeing the catastrophic destruction that was coming to this place. Yep. That Yahweh about Shemel Shah showed him in those visions. He seen a, a, a lot of death and destruction. He was like, damn, what's going to happen with me? Am I going to be saved? And yeah. we know through the spirit, you know, that the elect going to be saved. Right, but also he said, also say what? And the power shall stand in great fear. Right, even the elites are trembling because they know that that day is approaching. Yep. So we know that the elites, their upper echelon of their power structure is in, in pains and in straits. You know, saying weird in their most of their councils. How much more the people underneath them? They right. less the luminaries, right. the governors, the presidents, the prime ministers, the this and that. And then not only that, drop it down to the people. Right. Everybody right. gonna be afraid, right? Because what? They're looking for the counsel from these top people, yeah. and yeah. they shivering and they move. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so it's gonna be a time of hey, like I said, like, like hey, go to Jacob's trouble. A time like never before. That's right. 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 It's gonna be a time that has never been this bad up in up into history, up to date. All the time periods have passed. It's not going to equivalent or amount up to the perilous times that's coming that we're gonna be entering through. Be as Jacob's trouble. Mm -hmm. But Lord willing, we be of the Lord's, you know, Lord willing, we be of the elect so that we may be preserved for that time period. Right? Uh -huh. You know, that's why we do the things we do and present our bodies as a living sacrifice, not only out here on the camera, but also in our everyday life. Mm -hmm. That's right. Each and every day. We ain't a Jew outwardly, you know, just when we come out here. No, we a Jew yeah, inwardly that's right. all that's right, the right. time. That's right. Examine ourselves each and every day. Yeah, right. Doing what's commanded of us. So that we, like, so like you say, give an art, give a give diligence to make our calling and election short. Right. We, hey, we don't know we're the elect, but hey, we, hey, we gonna put in that effort to be as that. Hey, what does it say? Put on the elect. Exactly. Yep. Right, so we gotta be after the mind frame and the ways of the elect. All right. right. We we should be checking off a, a certain list of attributes. All right. To know what we stand. You know. Walking right. in that Examine spirit. Yourself. Yep. Walking in that That's spirit. Right. That's right. And then uh, uh, to get back to this Isaiah thirty four. I'm jumping down uh, to verse 22. This is 2nd Ezra 16 and 22. It says, For many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine, mm. and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. So, so if you know if you know about famine, well, that's supposed to be going to what? The scarcity of harvest. Mm -hmm. right. But it don't, it don't necessarily got to mean just of food. Mm -hmm. If you have a scarcity of anything, there's a shortage of whatever that case may be. Yep. Whether it be gas, diesel, whether it be water, God. you know, anything, that, that's a famine of that. It's a scarcity of it. Right. It, ain't, it ain't as plentiful as it w once was or what it used to be. There's a shortage of it. So right. anything in, in regards to that, it's a famine of that. And that's why I said, so the famine, it say what? That these people, what? They're going to starve to death. God. You know, the scripture say that they that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. Oh, that's right. So, but it's say, but if you escape that famine, so if you just so happen to escape it, because a lot of you may escape it from what? Cannibalism. Yep. Yep. Eating other people, eating your children. Yep. 
you know, eating your damn the side of your couch. Whatever the hell you may right. have, you may escape it somehow, <laughs> but guess what? Death's gonna come get you. Yep. So that's why I say it's a uh I'm gonna say it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of living power. Right? It's a uh oh, I gotta say this. Uh Deuteronomy 32 and 39. See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill, I make a lie, I wound, and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So there's nothing that anybody can do, none of your false gods, none of your seances, none of your witchcraft, warlock, whatever the hell it is that you do, that's not gonna be delivering you. If the Lord pull your name, so to speak, out of that hat or whatever for judgment, or whatever the case may be, because it's not random. Everybody has a set judgment, or or those of the elect, they're gonna have a set salvation. But whatever you fall upon as far as those who can receive judgment, it's gonna happen in its perfection. He's gonna come get you in a direct day, hour, second, millisecond, month, whether the uh, season, whatever the case may be, the Lord gonna get you on that day. That's right. Nothing you can do to be a deliverer out of his hand. That's right. Uh, and then another just add a little, little point too. How else are these people about to escape from hunger? They gonna bow down and take that, yeah. that yep. potato chip. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You know what I mean? That people gonna escape by that. They don't think they escape, but guess what? They still gonna be caught in right. the hands of the Lord and what he put to death. Yep. Yep. Right. Yep. If I remember, because we in those times, all right. Yep. That, uh, I put a, uh, there's various cities all over the states right now that are out of food, man. Mm -hmm. Completely out of food. Okay. So we in those times that the brother is talking about right now. We're we're in those times, you know. Just to, you know, New York. They say New York is out of food and other other places as well, man. Yeah. So hey, we in those times that the brothers is talking about, man. That's right. That's right. Uh, and then uh, uh, last verse. This is uh, Second Andrew sixteen and twenty three, and it says, "And the dead shall be cast out as dung, and there shall be no man to comfort them, for the earth shall be wasted and the city shall be cast yeah. down." Yeah. Yep. That's cool. It's going to be, you know, the cast out as dumb, no yep. burials, you yep. know, no one to comfort them. They're, they're yep. just destroyed, dead, you know, the city's cast down, utterly destroyed, all right? Yep, hey, backing up Isaiah 34 and 3, so yep. we go to verse 4 now, you know. So it's Isaiah 34 and 4. It says, and all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be grown together as a scroll. And if all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and a and and a falling fig from a fig tree. It's kind. It says uh, once again. It says that if you uh, roll together as a scroll, that's that uh, that that mushroom cloud, a huge mushroom cloud, going all over the face of the earth from where those uh, nukes are hitting. Okay. And, just, and he said it's gonna uh, uh, fall down as a leaf falling fr fr from a vine. If you ever seen a leaf uh, 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 falling down from a vine. It's falling and twisting, you know, out of control, you know, until it hits and, you know, boom, that's it. Hey, that leaf isn't rising back up and re-putting nope. re, re itself on there. Nope, same as a fig, same yep. as a fig. Yep, yep. yep. I got a, this is Revelation 20 and 1. Chapter 6, verse 12. And I beheld when he, had, when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. And why did this great earthquake come? Because why? For those thermonuclear, all those missiles come the earth, like you say, the earth shall reel to and fro like a truck. I got that. Uh, hey, <laughs> we, 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 you want to figure it out? Uh -huh. Now, this is Isaiah 24 and verse 19. It says, the earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage, and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. Right, because the scriptures say that it's going to be 200 million, you know, warhead shot simultaneously, mm. you know, throughout the whole entire earth. So just imagine 200 million, you know, thermal, you know, those uh, warheads just pelting the earth. Boom, boom, hey, boom, boom. It's going to look like the stars it's, are falling. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But that, hey, that's pretty that's, that's what we're doing. God, so, that's, yeah. You know, so just imagine that, right? It say, uh -huh. and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Mm -hmm. You know, ultimately symbolizing that death and destruction and the fire spewing up and the smoke spewing up yep. from those thermal nuclear warheads hitting. Right, it's a, and the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree cast her untimely figs, like you're talking about. When they flying up in the air, they're going to be, you know, with the uh, exhaust system, they look like they glitter. You know, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? That's how they're going to look like stars. Yeah. But these stars will come down, they're going to hit your ass, you're not going to be stationary, <laughs> right. you know, in the right. sky. You're going to be seeing stars. Right. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> a, so that's why it's, it's, it's comparing it to what? As figs falling off the tree. That's right. Right, because it's even as a fig tree cast her untimely figs, 
for she is shaken of a mighty wind. And we yeah. understand going to what? Jeremiah 51 verse 1. He's going to send what? To those thermonuclear warheads, a destroying wind. Hey, right. notice that it said untimely, right? Because mm -hmm. remember, the fig tree didn't know that wind was about to come through and knock all it down prematurely. Right. Just like this kingdom. It's going to be uh, taken like a thief in the night, man. When you least expect it, this right. place is going to be rocked. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's a, uh, that's right. And, um, it, oh, for Brother Pan, Jeremiah 51, verse 1, uh, real quick. I got it. Uh, uh, fair. Fair. <laughs> Jeremiah 51 and 1. Thus said the Lord, Behold, I will raise up a against Babylon and and against them that and against them that dwell in the midst of them, of them that rise up against me, a destroying wind. Mm -hmm. Right. So real quick, like I said, it's gonna raise up against Babylon and also them that are against you. Which you ultimately everybody everybody's against you. How about you not besides the elect in this time, you know, the nation of Israel. So everybody gonna hey, the Lord got a bone to pick with everybody. So of course the main destruction of other desolation will come to who? Babylon the Great, aka America, but not only America gonna be hit, also uh our our homeland, the, the land of Israel. Right. Right? The land of Canaan, Palestine, whatever you want to call it. That's gonna be utterly destroyed as well. But it's gonna be rebuilt back up because that's gonna be the headquarters of the Israelites. You know, right. to rule to rule from even here on earth, in the cosmos, this one universe, where the case may be. That's just gonna be the hub, the headquarters, if you will, of the nation of Israel. You start with your how white, how shy, and the rest of the order on down, right? But then, like I said, so the main two places to be utterly destroyed is going to be America, Babylon the Great, and then Israel, but Israel going to be built back up. Babylon the Great will not be rebuilt back up. Right. Well, we'll get into that. Right. Go ahead. <coughs> Jeremiah 51 and 2 says, and will send unto oh, Babylon. Oh, I mean, we know verse 1. Jeremiah 51 and 1. Thus said the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me, a destroying wind. Right, so that's how we knew that. That destroying wind, that's why I said in here, when she is taken of a mighty wind. Right. So, of course, destroying wind, hey, if you go look at thermonuclear, you shoot from, you know, saying a horizontal in some videos that with structures, buildings, trees. Yeah, so back in um, so back in Revelation six and fourteen, because we established well, I write it for you six. And the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree casting her untimely fig. Right, how the brother brought out is going to catch you unaware. It's going to catch you off guard. Right. right, when she is taken of a mighty wind, and we established from Jeremiah fifty one that that mighty wind is that destroying wind that's going to come from the thermonuclear warheads from those missiles. Right, they say, verse 14, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain of island removed out of their places. Now, this happens because of a great impact. It's like the previous, uh, previous uh, scripture said, What? And there was a great earthquake, and we went to it's really two and four from like a drunkard because 200 million thermonuclear warheads is going to be pelting the earth, right? So, it's saying the heaven departed as a scroll, right? Which we seen up in the sky, and we see. Like, if you think, you think of, like, an old scroll, you got the scroll, how they together, and then they unroll. It's like when you see a nuclear explosion, you know, you can give me an image of it, but that's what's talking about back in Isaiah 34, you know, that, that heaven rolling together as a scroll. Those ancient scrolls used to roll up together, and they'd be all bunched up, mm -hmm. and it's, you know, it comes in like a scroll like that. Oh, you got it? Oh, yeah, no. Sorry. Yeah. You know, so um, right, so like I said, like see how that's how that's round like a scroll, rolling together. Like these are ro like scrolls rolling together, so mainly like this one right here. That's gonna be what's gonna be seen mm -hmm. from this thermonuclear that impacted the structure, from the thermonuclear warhead. You know, it's right just to give you a an idea of why I compare it, how how I compare contrast these to a scroll because this remember during the time of this this chapter six verse fourteen, and the heaven the part of the scroll when it is rolled together, which we show. Uh, an example of the image of the, on the poster, and it says, when it was rolled together, and every mountain and island removed out of their places because, like I said, that great the pelting of those new thermonuclear missiles, right. those warheads, like I said, caused that great earthquake that it would continue to be hitting, 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 hitting rock the earth, right? And the mountains and the islands were moved out of their places. Ah. It says, and the kings of the earth, the, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains. Because you can tie all these people together when they're going to go into the retreats. Right. You know, into like, I know, I think they call it Missouri Ozark. Missouri yeah. Ozark Mountains. They actually have a bunker that's going to put down on the inside of it that get housed up to a million people. Then we got all these underground cities, all these underground places where all these people, those, those kids that are so for so long, they're going to hide themselves in there. Right? Because they know, and it's the reason they build it, because they know that
only the, you was only going to be preserved <laughs> to be those first round servants or slaves to the Israelites. That's right. You know? Yeah, first yeah. round draft pick. Right, like I said, y'all can be the first round draft pick. Just like we striving to be the first round draft pick of the elect to be received salvation to be beamed up. shall be able to stand in this great day. And we understand that nobody's going to be able to stand beside the elect. If he's going to put the spirit in to be able to stand that, to withstand it, ultimately he's going to be the strong tower that, that they're covering. You know what I'm saying? He's going to be, like I said, their refuge in that day of the wrath, the day of destruction. You know, so that's going to be the advice that they have chosen to receive salvation of the elect of Israel, not of the body of believers. As some people speak about all these nations that come together and just, we all believe in Jesus. Now you might as well believe in No, that's not going to happen. Only true worshipers of Yahweh are Israelites. Right. By flesh, by you know, sperm, by you know, whatever case you want to call it. By the seed line that right. come from Jacob through those 12 tribes. This is a book of uh, Genesis, chapter 35. 
beginning in verse 10, and it reads, And Yahweh said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name, and he shall call his name Israel. Verse 11, And Yahweh said unto him, I am Yahweh Almighty, be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and the king shall come out of thy homes. Okay, and out of that loins is out of the sea, just like the brother said. You know, no such thing as no spiritual. Right? I don't care what you believe, unless you are from the nation of Israel, you know, there's no salvation for you. You know, everlasting salvation. All right, as we were saying earlier, yeah, you're going to be preserved to be a uh, service of hand. House of the prince, and where are the dwelling places of the wicked? Right? If you understand that the dwelling places is what? Pretty much the fatness of the earth. God. All the best and all the good places. Right. That's their dwelling place. Ultimately, the dwelling place is the earth in itself because the earth is given to the hand of the wicked. God, right? God. You know, so they say, Have you not have you not asked them to go by the way and do yet not know their token? Wicked is reserved to the day of destruction. They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. God so it says reserved unto the day of destruction. And as, as, as the scriptures say, you know, he is not in trouble uh, as, as other men. That is because he, he's being reserved for the day of destruction. And mm -hmm. the day of wrath, he shall be brought forth to be destroyed, just like he said in this day. You know, he, he said uh, that uh, uh, the, uh, upon the people of my curse to judgment. All right. So he's, he's, he's saving you for last week, son. And we see it, and you know it. Who shall declare his way to his face? The prophets. And who shall repay him of what he hath done? Isaiah 14, 21 says, prepare slaughter for his 
children and parents slaughter for his children. So, so you uh, uh, Edomites are saying out there, I didn't have nothing to do with that. That was my that was my ancestors. Well, you know, you are your ancestors. That's another lesson. All right. For the iniquity of their fathers. And that's that that's that iniquity of the fathers. That's that sin on top of sin on top of sin. The scriptures said, you know, for Edom, you know, for three transgressions or four, you just kept doing sin. Never be in rulership again. You will never build again. All right. Verse twenty-two says, "For I will rise up against them," said the Lord. Yahweh Shem Yahweh says, "He's going to rise up against the nation of Esau." Uh, and cut off Babylon. And cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, said the Lord. Don, he says, "The name, remnant, son, and nephew." That's all, those are all males. You know, males have the seed. Okay, that's the seed line. It's cutting off the seed line. Remnant, nephew, son, you know, it's cutting it all off. That way you will never reproduce again. All right? Okay, now the seed of the father. God. Yeah, Numbers 118. God. Okay. Back in Isaiah 34. Desolation, destitutes, it'll be a mass and great, <laughs> I say grave, but ultimately a desert. that this time about that other 
that, that, that final judgment <laughs> when those missiles get shot off and those laser beams, you know, with the angels, when the house and the holy angels pull up with those concentrated laser beams. But this is, again, I, I gotta say, this is a great altar to your house about to shot to be burnt. That's right. That's right. Wow. The, the book of Isaiah, chapter 63, beginning in verse 1. Who is this that cometh from evil, with thy garments from positive? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness. The, the book of Isaiah, chapter 63, beginning in verse 1. Who is this that cometh from evil, with thy garments from positive? Right now, that's right? That's right. You know what I'm saying? So, they say, they say, who is this coming? This is talking about our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. They say, who is this coming? Edom. So he got a personal bone to pick with the Edomites. Because if you remember freshly, you know, was they not the ones who deliver them up? You know, yeah, our people deliver them up, but who carried out the act of the crucifixion? Right. Those rose at the time were what? Edomites. That's right. And that's why I speak about Revelation 1 7. Spaces on the money. Yep. All right. And whose space is on the money here in Babylon the Great? Money and coins. Oh. So they're not done away with. Also, who you can't talk about. Yep. You know, who you can't speak about. I also talk. I also feel like, you know, tell you about, you know, who's the ones that are in power, who's the rulership. You say something about it and they take this shit off the head. You know, you got that book? Revelation. The, the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 7. It says, Behold, Cometh with clouds, right? Those clouds are gonna be those those chariots with the uh, rest of the holy angel. He come on a great cloud himself as well. Yep. And every eye shall see him, right? All eyes shall see the return of our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Right. And they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Right. So say they also will pierce him. Conquer these nations. Cause division. Yeah. 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 Y
Bible dictionary. It's going to read about just Edom. It's just going back to what you said in the last, I'm being here in the last days. It says Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures as the scene of great future judgment. She is the only neighbor of the Israelites who was not given any promise of mercy from Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Prominently in the prophetic scriptures as the scene of great future judgment. Great future judgment. And I, I, just, I just wrote off some of those great future judgments. Yep, yep. As we all become that with the precepts of some of those great future judgments from the word and spirit of Yahweh Bashanel Shai, not from men. Right. That he uses men, but we come with these revelations on our own. Nope. No, this is the spirit of Yahweh Bashanel Shai. This is his movie. This is a part of his, uh, the, he's the director. He's the producer. So right. this is what's going to happen in his movie. We just part of the cast. And Lord we part of the cast of being the hope for them. To be his men. To receive salvation. This is what all of the what the Lord's pleasure. Like in our very nope. 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 She is the only neighbor of the Israelites who was not given in promise, any promise of mercy from Yahweh Washing God, No promise of mercy. And James 2 and 13 says, For he shall have judgment without mercy that have showed no mercy. And mercy rejoices against judgment. So pretty much saying, you know, when he's going to be uh, uh, judging you, he's going he's to be happy doing it. Okay? Very happy doing it. Because uh, you have not shown any mercy. You know, for, for from the time that the blessings were given out, uh, Amos, Amos 1 and 11 says your uh, hatred was perpetual, along with uh, Ezekiel uh, 35. You got it? Yep. Okay, go ahead. Uh, back, back to brother. Ezekiel 35, verse 5. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred. Perpetual, that means continual, non-stop. Yep. Okay, we're seeing that to this day. All the way from the time that the blessings were given out in, in Genesis 27 to this very day as we stand here right now. Right. Or even even the, uh, even the going back to the garden. God, yeah, God. See the hatred between your forefather, Cain. God, God. Yep. So just add to the brother's point, even going all the way back to then, that same perpetual, everlasting hatred is still manifesting and it seems evident until this day. Says, and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword. God, and we know that was him, was that he was given the blessing of the sword. Okay. It says, in the time of their calamity, in the time of their iniquity, he had an end. God, so you never stop. Just when things were starting, uh, you know, just kept going. You kept, you kept making it worse. Okay. Right. Showing no mercy. Showing no mercy. You say, therefore, as I live, said Yahweh, I shall shine power. Island, and we know that he lives forever. It's, it's called the Ancient of Days. Okay? No beginning, no end. All right? All right. Say, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Except thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. All right, all right. Pursue thee. You can't run. You can't hide. You can't stop anywhere. That blood is going to pursue you, and it's going to come to you. He said, he will prepare you unto that means it's gonna happen, okay? By any uh, method he determines, you know, which you know, is gonna be the fire, concentrating laser beam, and any other judgment he has coming at this time. Right? Yeah, it won't be an accident. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.
righteousness by he's a savior. Right, we know his name is Yahusha. Meaning he saves, he delivers.
taking part of her sport. Everybody put their hands on us. You know, everybody. So, yeah, we, we got no help from anyone. Just, just like the scriptures say, you know, uh, miserable are they who, who, who took her, and miserable are they who received her. Yep. And, and let's, say, let's say if you didn't, right? Well, you still accessory to the crime. Yep. Because you're still in bail. Yep. So you get charged too. Yep. You know, so just yeah. put it on. Yeah. You, you, yeah. you benefit out of yeah. the situation. That's the right. confederacy. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'll praise you, how about you, my shot for that? Right. And that you be able to let. Right. As far as the rest of, the, of our people that's in the nations, 
Well, they just don't continue to be sleep, remain in the congregation of death until they receive that physical death from the thermal nuclear warheads or whatever said judgment that you have a shot going to render unto them. Soaked with blood. Just went into Isaiah 63. You know, uh, all that blood, all that bloodshed. All right, and their dust made fat with fatness. You know, that's that uh, uh, dust remaining from that flesh. When you turn into powder, you know, you're gonna be dis destroyed. Just dust everywhere. You know? In my scripture, it says another word for the soak. It says drunken, <laughs> drunken with blood. You know? Yeah, um, a lot of blood. The, the book of Isaiah, chapter 26, and verse 21. It says, For behold, the Lord is out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. God, you know, that's the thing. It's, 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 uh... Oh. 
Behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. God, the inhabitants of the earth, of the earth for their iniquity are you uh, uh, 17 nations and two thirds of uh, Israel. You know, and of those 17 nations, specifically, you saw Edom. Okay? It says, uh, the earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well in teaching us this 100% truth. Salutations to them and our fellow Akim who labor in this truth week in and week out on the highways and byways. And also salutations to the hopeful elect of the scattered 12 tribes of Israel, scattered to the four corners of the earth. That be like a disciple bird. So you can say Shalom. 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 Shalom.